I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer, not a doubter. I'm a doer, not just a hearer of God's word. My life is the better. After having heard the word of faith, my faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the precious word of God. Now, if you believe that, give God a praise. Amen. Today, we're going to start something different. Hallelujah. I believe that that last few uh, series has really blessed your life. But uh, I remember uh, what God told us at the beginning of the year, how that this was a year of accelerated favor and grace, that 2013 will be a year of accelerated favor for the believer. The favor of the grace of God will move in an accelerated rate, way to bring his will to pass in our lives. It's going to be a year of promotion. There's going to be a year of prosperity. There's going to be a year of popularity and prominence, a year of preferential treatment, another, a year also of where your petitions and policies, hallelujah, will be changed in your favor. Amen. Uh, and so God wants to show us how to get there. He wants to show us what to do in order to have these, this year of accelerated favor and grace actually operating in our lives. I mean, if it's for me, what do I need to do to set myself up so that this accelerated favor and grace can come to me? Amen. And so that's what we're going to deal with today. We're going to deal with from the subject. Uh, in fact, turn your Bibles first to Genesis chapter 15. Amen. Genesis chapter 15. I'll start this one out this way. Genesis chapter 15. Amen. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 15. We'll start there. Verse 1, Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, it says, And after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, underline that, Abram. I am your shield and exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus? Then Abram said, look, you have given me, then Abram said, look, excuse me, then Abram said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, look now toward the heavens and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord. Look like he's reminding Abram who he is. I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit. And he said, Lord God, how will I know I will inherit it? So he said to him, or God said to him, bring me a three-year-old cow, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he bought all these things to him and cut them in two down the middle and place each piece opposite the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram and behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abram, know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, 
and will serve them, and they will afflict them 400 years. Mm. Before you go on, if we go on any further to read the rest of this story, you need to go back up to verse 7. And where it says to give you this land to inherit, you need to underline that. Now we'll go continue with verse 14. Okay. And also the nation whom they serve will judge afterward. I will judge afterward. They shall come out with great possessions. Now as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace and you shall be buried at a good old age. But in the 14th generation, they shall return from the iniquity of the Amorites. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not complete, and it shall come to pass. When the sun went down and it was dark, that behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between those pieces. One, or excuse me, on the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I will give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river Euphrates. He said, I will give you this land. Oh, I have given you this land. Amen. Underline, I have given you this land. Amen. Now, at the beginning of this chapter, I read to you a verse, and it said, after these things. So before things showed up, things showed up after something else had happened. Amen. And that's what we're going to discuss today. The, the, the title of this subject is learning to trust God as your, as your source. Amen. Learning to trust God at your, as your source during, <laughs> using crunch time faith. Learning to trust God as your source using crunch time faith. Everybody say crunch time. Crunch time. Amen. So now what I see here was two things happening. Number one, I saw where God told Abram, I am going to give you the land. Yeah. Verse 7. Yeah. After the covenant was made, after he had made the sacrifice unto the Lord, after he had offered up something to God, God came back and said, I have given you the land. So in verse 7, he says, I'm going to give it to you. After Abram obeyed God and offered up to God that sacrifice or the offering that God wanted, then God came back and said, I've given you the land. There's a difference. Before he made the sacrifice or gave the offering, God promised him the land but after he had made the offering, God told him, you got it. Amen. Amen. My objective here is this. This series of teachings is designed to empower you to trust God in the most trying of times, to teach you how to apply the principles of God's word so that you will have the victory God has always intended for you to have. Amen. Amen. So now, the Bible says, chapter 1, or excuse me, chapter 15, verse 1, it says, after these things. Now, after these same things sets the tone for what was going on in Abram's life. And so today, I'm going to give you a, re a review of what went on in Abram's life up to that point. <sighs> now, what Abram has just done before he, God approaches him, what Abram had just done is that he's pulled off one of the most impressive military campaigns up to that time. Amen. 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 There was a king named Chadalomer, Chadalomir, who was, was conquering every city and every nation in that time. Amen. And so what happened was that this Chadalomir overran Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. Now, in Sodom and Gomorrah, <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah was the residence of Lot's nephew, excuse me, Abraham's nephew named Lot. Amen. And Lot had moved there when they divided their flocks and one decided to go one way, the other decided to go the other. Well, Lot chose that land of Sodom and Gomorrah and this king has come, conquered the land and took away Lot and all his possessions captive. Amen. Now, a messenger runs to Abram and tells Abram that Lot 
is now a prisoner of war. His wife, his family, and all his possessions. Abraham puts together 318 men, servants. Now think about this. The army of Chadalomar is comprised of five kings. They rough, they tough, and they're experienced. Abraham puts together 318 men and then ambushes Chadalomire and his army. He defeats Chadalomire and his army, and there's just a remnant that's left of it. Then Abraham takes Lot and all Lot's his possessions, and all those people uh, that were with Sodom and Gomorrah are now set free because of this victory. Amen. Amen. And so now, the Bible says then that, but Abraham is troubled. He's, he's been victorious. He's had a great victory. Now he's troubled. Why would he be troubled? He's had a great victory. I'm saying it again. He's fought a great fight. He's freed all those that were taken captive by Chaudelomire. Uh, and so now, all of a sudden, though, he's afraid. Because that's the first thing that God addresses. He told Abraham when he came to him in chapter 15, we read it, he said, do not be afraid. So that means Abraham has some problems. Wouldn't you? Now, he snuck up on and attacked one of the mightiest armies at that time. Amen. He's beaten them decisively through a surprise attack. This is, a, this is an army that had a reputation now. Amen. This is an army that was one of the, the mightiest machines going at that time now. Amen. Now, all of a sudden, you've been defeated by some chumps. 318 servants who have not been trained for battle. So don't you think the remnant of that army is going to go recruit and go looking for Abram? Amen. Wouldn't you? Amen. You want some revenge. <laughs> Amen. You want some revenge. Uh, so Abram was still unsettled. And so now, while he was unsettled, God came to him. Isn't it amazing there are times when we get unsettled? We get nervous in the service. And it seems like God always shows up. Doesn't it? Seems like God always shows up. Amen. Uh, God tells Abram, fear not, I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. Now, you got to understand this. You got to understand what's going on here. If Abram does not deal with his fears, it will shut down everything God wants to do through him. So God has to answer some issues for, for Abram. Okay, amen. If you, look at your name and say you, if you do not deal with your subtle fears in, in your life, those fears of impelled, impending overwhelm, those fears of trouble, yes. or that those feelings that you are not going, it, it, it's just not going to work out, it will rob you of every promise that God has afforded you in his word. If you can't get over some things and you're afraid of what's going to happen, not knowing what would happen, overwhelmed at what has already happened, you're starving off a move of God in your life that will change your right now situation. Amen. So now, when God comes to Abraham, God is now dealing with his fears because he got a lot of stuff he want to flow through Abraham. So now he's dealing with his fears. And so now, before God can give to Abraham, he must deal with some of the stuff Abraham said. Now, Abraham has won the battle, but tells God this. Listen to this. I really have not, you, you really have not given me what I want. This is God talking to Abraham. I mean, Abraham talking to God. You know what? You really ain't gave me what I want. Now, he's worried about this army, but he's more worried about what God said he'd do 
that he hasn't done. Okay, say praise the Lord. He says, you have not really given me what I want. I really want that promise you made to me that you are going to give me a son. And up to now, I ain't seen nothing. Now, this is after a great victory. Because, now, the reason why Abraham is talking like this is that fear is overriding him about impending danger. And he needs somebody. He needs God to show up. Okay, y'all looking at me funny. Okay, amen. In here today are people just like that. You got some stuff on the table, been on the table before the Lord a long time, and you haven't got an answer. You're going to get an answer before this series is over. Amen. Amen. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God tells Abram, I am your shield and exceedingly great reward. He said, Abram, nothing has changed. I'm the same God that went with you in battle, the same God that made covenant with you before. I'm that same God. I'm your shield and your protector. Amen. Oh, amen. You got to know, no matter what you're going through, that God is your protector, or you will never see your future. Oh. Amen. You got to know that God is your protector, or you'll never see your future, because you'll always be a slave of your past. You got to know that no matter what has gone on in your past, God has your future written across the tapestry of his heart, and he wants to reveal that to you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I cannot allow myself to be a victim and slave of my past. Amen. Somewhere along the line, I have to use the last lesson pastor taught us and pour the blood of Jesus over my past so it won't impair my present because it's my present that sets up my future. Amen. Without a positive present, I'll never have a productive future. Because it's my present that sets up my future, not my past. My past is just a reference point for me to go back to and remember what God has already done. But it's my future that's most imperative here and it's set up with my present. So if I'm not thinking right in my present, I'll forfeit my future. Amen. So I can't allow the devil to bring back past when I'm trying to map out my future. Amen. 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 Now, what I'm talking about is condemnation. Yes. But now there still should be some conviction. Yes. Yes. Okay, y'all stay. Yes. If there is no conviction of my past, yes. Yes. then the power to, to, the power to, how I want to say this, the power to determine present and map out future will never happen. Because for me to have a successful future is going to take the power of God. Amen. 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 So he tells Abram, I am your exceedingly great reward. I have not changed. I was the same God yesterday. I'm the same God today. I'll be the same God tomorrow. I do not change. Amen. Now I want y'all to get that now. So now Abram has a choice. Now, everybody say crunch time. Yeah, see, either he can trust God or he can run. He can trust God or he can run. That's what I mean when I say crunch time. Everybody say crunch time. Crunch time is a point in life where the odds of success are against you. Everybody say crunch time. Crunch time is, it is a time in life where you do not, that if you do not make the right choice, you derail your destiny. Everybody say crunch time. It's a point in life where if you compromise, you could also, you could, you could also in the process defame your character. 
Ooh. So now, everybody say crunch time. Crunch time. There are three dynamics which we're, we're going to look at in crunch time. Mm -mm -mm. Abraham was in a crunch time situation, man. Okay, either I'm going to trust God or I'm going to run. How many of us, have, of us have run instead of trusting God in that circumstance? Run to us doesn't mean necessarily physically getting up and running. Sometimes we do it mentally. Sometimes we do it emotionally. 